G'day fellas and welcome to a season 5 guide for the Delhi Sultanate. Today we're looking at Don Artie's Delhi. He's an incredibly good player and he's going to show us in this video exactly how to go through a Delhi opening. It provides a really strong framework whether you're in team games or 1v1 for a solid Delhi opening. So let's get into it. It's a really simple one. All villagers head straight over to a straggler tree and he starts by just putting a scout in the queue. If you're playing in your games, you don't need to put this scout in the queue. The reason he's doing it is because he's up against the Rus here. So basically just follow along with the exact same build order. Just forget the scout. So when he opens up, he's going to be sending every single villager over to wood. One villager will go to the mosque and then we'll make a house. And these five villagers are then going to make a mill over here on the berries. Now, keep in mind, you can make your mill on the berries without handing in your wood. The trick here is that you don't want to shift queue your villagers. Just let them finish the mill. And when they do finish it, you'll see that they're able to just hand in straight away. And then that way you save a little bit of walking time. So from here, he's going to go up to eight villagers on food, on berries. And keep in mind, because you're on berries, that means that you don't need your scouts to come back with their sheep. You can stay out on the map for as long as you like uh, and keep your, your sheep underneath your town center. And it's very, very simple. So once your mill comes up, you're going to start researching wheelbarrow. You can also put survival techniques in the queue, but it's not really going to be researched that much. We're going to focus on getting horticulture next. And also from the mosque, as soon as the mosque is up, we're going to start researching efficient production and making sure that we put piety in the queue after. Now that we've gone up to eight villages on food, we're going to start rallying our villagers out over onto gold. This is part of the reason why we took that 50 wood early on. We sent all six villagers out over onto wood and then moved one of them onto the mosque. And then the other five gathered up 10 wood each, which was enough for us to put down our mining camp. Now that we're out here, we're going to be rallying... Uh, a, a total of three villagers out to gold. And these villagers, with the exception of one, are going to be staying there pretty much for all game. One of the things I love about this build order, it's really simple when it comes to your town center waypoint. So you don't have to think too much about where do I send my next villager? Where do I send my next th this, that? It's, it's very, very simple. You go eight to food, and then you're going out three to gold. And then once you've done that, every other villa or every single villager after that is just going straight out to wood. Now, there, there's a point where we actually take the foot off wood, but you go up to 12 villagers on wood. So it really makes the early game quite easy, very simple and streamlined uh, to manage. So Don's going to continue scouting on the map, always working towards the center of the map, playing against the Rus. He's just denying as much bounty as he possibly can. Now, this opening is going to be a uh, Dome of the Faith opening, which in my opinion is the better landmark. But I, I am, just remember, I'm an eco player, right? Like I love playing big economy stuff. So anything that I can get, uh, that enhances my economy, I'm going to favor it. So that's why I think it's better. But that's only from my, from my perspective. And I think that at the moment, these two landmarks are very, very close in power. Another thing to note is if you're wondering about uh, villager numbers, I did see the comment saying, can you put it in caster mode so we can see the villager numbers on, uh, so they know which resource to go on to? Uh, just check down here in the bottom left-hand corner. It, it displays it there for you. Uh, so now we're going to be going on to straggler trees. So uh, once you've got uh, three villagers out here, you should have enough to throw down your um, your first lumber camp. Uh, but we do see one villager gets pulled from gold and three villagers get pulled from food. And these villagers, after they make this landmark, are then going to come down over onto wood. Okay, so I'll say that again. So when you've got enough to age up, three villagers from food, or three from the, the berries rather, and one villager from your gold will come together to make the Dome of the Faith. And always make it next to the town center like this, just because it's very safe. So now, now that you've got the three villagers that have gathered over on wood, Don's going to put down a house here. I would recommend you can actually put down a lumber camp first. So Don makes, I, I will say it, Don makes a mistake. Uh, you can put down a, a lumber camp first. And then by the time that you've you've uh, got, got everybody out there, you will have enough resources to throw down uh, your house. It might be a little bit tight. You might need to rush it up. But th this is definitely the safer uh, way. And it just means that you're going to be maximizing your efficiency with that straggler tree. So we do see now that Don has is up to five villagers here on wood. So quite a lot of wood early on in this game. The, the big focus... Uh, for the deli, at least at this early stage, is to just get that wood down. You can see we've got a little bit of a split of the villagers here, but it, it, look, it's not a super big deal. The main focus here is just getting that, that lumber camp up as quickly as he can. Uh, and he does he did technically have 10, 10 wood on these villagers, but because they were splitting it between themselves, they don't hand it back off. So it's, it's one of those small little things, but knowing that he's going to be doing some long-distance chopping, he says, you know what, I'm not even too fast. So Age Up comes through for his enemy. He's starting to build up that bank of gold. And you can see that the resources, or rather the upgrades now coming through for him, Piety has finished at this point. Four, four minutes and 30 seconds. So he is he's sitting absolutely empty on the mosque. 
And now that wheelbarrow is coming through. But look at the timing on this. So even if you put the survival techniques in the queue, it's not going to matter because you're going to have to cancel it anyway for horticulture. So now that we've aged up to... Uh, to feudal age i'm going to pause it here because this is where you need to have a mental reset and you need to ask yourself what are the things i need to do now that i'm in feudal and the answer is you need to click every single damn upgrade that you can click number one sanctity this is really really important now we want to be clicking it from from our mosque so sanctity and then we're going to be clicking all seeing eye as well we want to click out our mining camp specialized pick horticulture double broad axe as well as forestry we want to get these out as early and as quickly as we can don't be like puppy poor or wham sometimes they forget their upgrades when they're playing delhi don't do that let's keep going he's also training a scholar from the dome of the faith 65 gold nice and cheap two villagers on gold these guys are just going to stay here forever unless they get raided if they get raided don will move them onto another resource but he will always bring them back out and that's what's important to remember is they always come back out so now, now that he's rallied 12 villagers over onto wood, these villagers will provide the wood that you need for a barracks, for a blacksmith, for additional mosques if you need to. That's what these villagers are here for. Now he's going to start rallying over onto sheep. I don't know exactly why he goes for sheep, but I guess he's just trying to diversify, right? Like you don't want to have all of your villagers out here collecting berries. You kind of want to have them mixed up because there's, there's no real need to have them like that. Otherwise, they're just kind of bumping into each other. But he will throw down the barracks. Now, keep in mind, this villager will come back over onto wood once it's finished. And he's going to continue rallying onto sheep. And we can see that he's rallying his, uh, his scholars that he's making from his Dome of the Faith down towards the mosque. But once the barracks is complete, he's going to be looking to get that one through. And in the middle of the map, he spots out the enemy aggression coming out. So he knows that it's going to be about playing feudal. He sees that his enemy is going for archers and cavalry. So he's already open with spears. So that means that he can go into a stable here. And that's a really solid decision for him. Uh, but he throws down the blacksmith as well. Spearman production has begun. He's got the two scholars inside here. The third scholar that comes out is going to be rallied over into his uh, in, into his barracks and that's going to allow him you can see right now we are heading towards the top side of the map and the idea is that he wants to start walling up a sacred site this is really important we need to make sure that we're always thinking about walling sacred sites because that's our victory condition remember we want to defend the attack that's coming in but at the same time we need to make sure that we're focusing on our victory condition which of course is to capture those sacred sites so we do see that stable is coming down now and Don is now researching his upgrades. Always starting off with his ranged upgrades. We see Iron Undermesh first, then Steeled Arrow coming in after. Even though he doesn't have any archers on the field, he still focuses on those ranged upgrades first. They're the most impactful uh, in the early stages of the game. So at this point, Don is still just rallying out to food. We can see at this point, he's he's got those uh, 12 villagers that he had on wood. You can see one of them is building up this, this, uh, this stable. Uh, I'm not sure exactly where the other one went. Maybe he, maybe he got sent off to, to do something else. But uh, you can see that he did bring these two villagers in uh, and, and rallied them over onto food uh, because he was getting attacked from this angle. But subsequently, he's now sending out two villagers out towards his position. He always wants to make sure that he's got two villagers there because as long as you've got those two villagers out there gathering gold, you're always going to have the scholars. So that's really important to see. So Don now going to throw down the archery range. I really I don't know where that 12th villager went that was on wood. Maybe maybe I wasn't paying attention the last couple of times I was watching him do this because I've watched him do it a couple of times. And uh, maybe it, maybe it made its way over to onto food or something after it built uh, a building or something like that. But you can see him continuing to add in production. We do have the archery range coming down now. But we are he he's going to be shifting it up. And a wild man stalks the land. I don't know exactly where that is, but uh, that's not the focus right now. The focus is providing this framework to you because just remember you can use this framework in team games in one v one. Whether you want to play cavalry, whether you want to play infantry, it's up to you how you want to do it. Uh, I would recommend sticking with the Dome of the Faith. I think it's a great landmark that gives you a lot of flexibility in how you play and always gives you the option of going in. Imperial as well with the Delhi Sultanate, which is kind of rare. Uh, but we do see big raids coming through. Not big raids, but uh, annoying raids here for Don to deal with. He's just going to come back to berries for the moment. And definitely the right call, right? This is part of the reason why we always look to take berries first, is because once we get hit out here on the edges of the map, uh, we're, we're going to be in an absolutely fine position. So Don now is going to continue to mass up. And just remember, we're not going to be focusing on the outcome of this game. We're not going to be focusing on what really happens um, in, in the lead up to that. What we're focusing on here is what Don Artie is doing, because this gives us the solid framework. Remember, Don is a Conqueror 3 player. He is rated at about 2,000 rating uh, in the last season. So I can tell you right now, he knows what he's doing when it comes to the Delhi Sultan. So we can see the first scholar is going to be making its way up towards the north of the map. He's very fearful or, or conf conscious of the enemy attempting to prevent that from coming through. He gets hit with a raid on the backside. And we can see that he's just going to keep massing up units right now. So sends out the villagers. Does have his textiles upgrade and still getting all of those upgrades through. You can see he's now got the melee upgrades in and a spearman is going to come out and help him out. 
keep in mind you want to try and get your textile upgrade as soon as you can uh if you're under under pressure from from raids that is the key difference okay uh because it only takes 20 seconds so even if you save one villager then you have you have gained a villager uh through through doing that so really important to, to prioritize that if you're under pressure early on but now don out here on the map has completely walled in this northern point and it will mean that he's able to secure up at least 120, I think it's 125 gold uh, every, every minute, which is not a bad little bit of gold that comes in. It means he can also take these villagers off gold if he needs to. That's the, that's the key thing there, that if he needs to. You know, if he's, if he's under pressure on that front side, then he can take them off, but he can still keep that scholar production. We can see he's up to a pretty decent number of scholars at the moment. We've got three, four, five with that sixth one in the north. He's got plenty more in queue. So he is just spamming out scholars like a madman at this point. And now back towards the base. Excuse me. Back towards the base. Uh, nothing really changing with production. One of the things to note though is he is garrisoning inside of his production buildings. So this is essentially two barracks. This is essentially two stables. And now up towards that north side, the sacred site is being taken. And don't you love that new sacred site uh, icon? I tell you what, I wish we could get that in caster mode. But uh, I suspect it's probably a few years away uh, from that. So now behind this... Don looks to continue expanding out onto additional food sources. But this is essentially it. That, that, is, the, that is the beginnings of it. And now he's going to look to push out. As I said, we're not going to focus too much about this. It, it, it really, to me, it, it's not about the, the micro. It's not about the battle that's happening. We're just watching it because I know you guys like to in, enjoy watching this, you know, when we're, when we're taking some time away from the, the macro. We're able to watch the fights. And during this, I mean, Don's doing pretty well. Pretty decent push here trying to get control of this central sacred site but obviously all of the enemy's production is right here so this is very hard for him to fight into and if anything i'd say he's probably overextending himself at this point just because the production uh, you're up against five production buildings here so he's got to be really careful with how he plays it but let's take a look back towards the base because he's taken that first sacred site in the north of the map so this guarantees that he's got that steady gold income coming through and he does indeed take the villagers off gold and so now the question becomes how do we go about getting into Castle Age? Because that, that's our big focus here. It's to get to Castle Age and we can win from Castle Age because there's a couple of important units that, that are there. Most notably, we've got access to Men at Arms, uh, also have access to the Lancer. Uh, even though with the Ghazi Raider though, it is a, a really nice substitute uh, for that. Nothing quite raids like that. Uh, so you can see the big focus here at the moment is just going to be on food. And he, he's rallying out to food. He's looking to gather up as much food as he possibly can. And one of the things that I would say he could probably look to improve on is sending down a spearman or two down here to start walling this in as well he's got the resources for it let's take a look at the uh at, at the uh the line of sight and you can see that there is a horseman down here which would deny a single scholar that's why we always send out the, the spearman first and just to look to try and take that because then you know you're doubling your your income from out there definitely goes a long way uh, and now beginning to come through but that's essentially it when it comes to the, the delhi opening um, it, it is it is nice and simple. Uh, we'll go we'll go through the start of it just just once more. I'm just going to restart it so we can we can take a look. I just I just want to go through and just really go over that beginning because the, the beginning is the most important part. Just getting that down right, being able to age up every single time. And I want to remind you again, this is a framework that we're we're looking at here. So we're going out all of our villages onto wood. Remember that we're queuing up villages in the town center, and one of those villages is going to come out to the mosque. We'll speed it up. This villager will then go and make a house afterwards, and all five of these villages are going to go build a mill. And we're not going to shift queue them after this. We're just going to let them build the mill so they hand in because if we shift queue them onto berries, they will not hand in. We'll go up to a total of eight villagers on food and then start rallying out over on the gold. We go up to three villagers on gold and then we start rallying out to a straggler tree. We always go to the straggler tree that we've chopped because remember to chop a tree, it takes resources. We don't get wood when we're chopping the tree. We, we only get wood once it is felled. So to fell the tree, it takes time, it takes resources. So we don't go to this one. We don't go to this one or this one. We always go to that same straggler tree. So we're going to rally out there. And then just before the third villager comes out, we're going to be able to click up to our next stage. We're going to take... What we want to do is we also want to put a control group in. So if you've got a control group out here, so you might have control group one for your scout, control group two for this scout, control five for your town center. What you want to be doing is then putting your villagers that are going to be build, build, building your landmark in a separate control group. So we might say control three like that. And from there, what you can do is you can tell them all, hey guys, you know, when it's time to build the landmark, you just press three T and boom, straight on, straight on that landmark. Uh, immediately and it gets thrown down uh, and from here we're just rallying out over to wood nice and simple all the way up to 12 villages and then we start rallying out to food really really simple if you've got any questions leave them down below a uh, a, a bit of a shorter build order here but don Artie's deli is definitely admirable and if you yeah if you've got any questions let me know if you enjoyed the video leave a like and we'll catch you guys in the next one